Uh, let's try and sort of talk about and discuss how you guys might go ahead in trying to figure out your own designs and working through that process. Because although I'm a huge advocate of the 90 by 90 chair, that is a very different approach than most of the dining chairs you've probably come across. This prototype here, full-size prototype, I can sit in it. I, it's you know arguably not probably as comfortable as the real thing would ever be, and you know, it's a little bit rickety, and we're not so much testing it for strength as much as we're addressing the aesthetic, the proportions, as well as getting at least some gauge of the comfort. And what we can do is, a lot of times, not so much with this example, but in a lot of them you can adjust things like I was saying before by putting like a little piece of masonite under here or MDF. Well, you can do exactly the same thing here with the seat. So maybe the included angle seems a little tight, but we can put a half inch piece of plywood or whatever is lying around underneath the back of the seat and that'll change the angle and see how that feels. And the playing around the design, that's trial and error. That's like what your I like, it's very subjective. It's just like anything in design. What I think is great, you might think is terrible or vice versa. So this would be like the very first prototype. I had a sketch, I don't have a picture of the sketch. You know, if I can kind of start with an idea either in my brain or on paper and then take it to full size and you start twisting legs in and out and kicking them in and out, like that will inform, your eye will then be able to see it in 3D space, you can walk around it, and that will inform the design more than anything else. Um, so this was stage one. Stage two, I actually laminated a pair of back legs. You know, it was still crudely constructed. You can see like this crest rail is just screwed on, but there is more shaping, you know. I, this was maybe a two day process or a three day process to try and like refine it further. You know, the seat there is a bent plywood panel seat off of a form. Mind you, the form was already in existence, so I didn't make a form to do it, but it was a more refined, still sittable version, but just a way to kind of play with the shapes, play with the proportions, right? Like, and it's like maybe I like this split, but like how can we refine it? Or like this leg looks way fatter down here than the back leg, and like that doesn't look quite right. Maybe the stance isn't quite right. You can see, you know, where this foot hits in comparison to the crest rail is pretty good. So like you take the things that work, you ditch the things that don't, and you, you move forward. These are called drawing bows. So they're just straight bows. This one's tapered. You can see it's thinner up here, and down here. And as you tension it up, you've got different curves, right? So they're really, really great for single curves. Anything serpentine, they don't really work. Um, and then this one's just a symmetrical bow. So what I'm saying is um, if I'm doing full-size drawings, which is how I always work, I can make the curve for, let's say like this leg, right? And I can know it's this section of the bow and I'll mark it with two pencil marks. I'll trace that onto a piece of quarter inch MDF, bandsaw it close, then hot glue this bow to that piece of MDF with a top bearing bit in the router table, route off this bow. Okay, this joint is the, probably one of the strongest joints I've ever done. It's um, it's what I've been taught as being the Brian Boggs joint. Spoke shape, yeah, Brian Boggs is a chair maker from I believe, I think it's Indiana, but that could be wrong. And he has this joint, which I think we will get to, which is called, a, usually they're double bare face tenons. So each of these pieces, the entire part tenons in, so it's a bare face tenon into the back leg, so then this whole section will set into the back leg and the shoulder will be somewhere in about here. So you're basically like, it's, it's, the most, it's such an indestructible joint. It's, um, here is uh, like the 
that rocking chair, the one with the metal in it and the cantilevered seat in back. Well, obviously I, I can't prototype that cantilever, so we just kind of draw the shape on it out of, with, and mark or out of plywood so you get kind of the idea. You can kind of cross your eyes and blur them and look at it and see kind of the shapes. But like, you see like all these like pieces of wood and like things that are going on in here. Like that's like making it, knowing it's not right, taking these screws out, putting a block in, trying it again. That's still not right, putting another block in. That's pretty good. Come and sit in this for me, tell me what you think. Pull it out, is that better or worse? Put it back in, better or worse? It's like being at the eye doctor, A or B. Uh, um, and there's the drawing. So this, this is the only drawing that exists for that chair, is the side view. The rest of it was just like out in space. We'll deal with it as it comes. Um, but this totally informed like what the like what the widths would be and like what the displays would be and all the other components. And it was like again, it was a day or two. You can see like this piece of plywood here just supports that back from not falling away so you don't sit in and like go over the back. Uh, here is that that one dining chair for the wishbone shape. Um, green tape to help visualize where I want to be cutting. What are my shapes going to be like? It's hard to draw a pencil line on there and then stand back and be able to see it. And actually what I've found really useful since then is if you take your roll of blue or green tape, and you take your wheel gauge or your, your cutting gauge, and you set it for an eighth or three sixteenths, you cut around the tape a couple of times, you get this really thin strip of tape and that allows you to kind of tape curves into things a lot easier. One inch wide tape, it, you know, like it's always like crinkling and not going down smooth. Here's a model um, for whoever was asking about model making. Uh, for that rocking chair, you can see here like this side of the chair is different from this side. You know, I don't have this little guy right there. And model making, I don't usually go there, but sometimes it's really helpful. Some people swear by it. There's my first grind, there's a ton of notes, there's a ton of like ways to make jigs. The second drawing is a lot more figured out. It's got all three views. Okay, so I have that rocking chair frame. I, before I drill 300 holes in it to leave that fishing line, Try out the side profile, drill the holes, start weaving uh, MDF box. And yeah, it was good. It was good enough. Uh, this was one of the better prototypes I've ever made. Actually, had real joinery everywhere. There were a couple screws, but they were pretty uh, in the street. And that's, that's it. That's designing a chair. It's, not supposed to be this overwhelming idea. I could probably have built us a chair to all sit in over lunch today. I could cut things out on a bandsaw and screw them together and trust your eyes.